Ding, ding, ding. That's right. We're back in class. Here we are, another week with the bees from Little D. I'm Morg. I'm Joe. And this week we have a special lesson in history for you. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy is right. The previous weeks we have done math, science, and what was it? English, writing, reading? Reading, writing, English, all of those, Morg, the whole family. Yeah. Wow. It was it was hard. I can't believe y'all do this every day, students. Wow. But we aced it. Well, we aced it. <laughs> and we're probably going to fly through history, too, because we all know that's the easiest subject besides BE. Okay, that's right. Like, I am excited today's history because we're just going to get to come to class, learn a little bit about something that happened, check out, leave, you know, casual. Do you think when people, if they are just jumping in with us, are really going to think this is some sort of history class? Oh, my gosh, I hope so. <laughs> like, yeah, we are historians and very accurate. So please write what we say down. Yes, we definitely fact checked everything and not just <laughs> did regular Google searches, even if we did those. Um, often we don't even bother with that. No, no, no. No, no. We're we're much better than Google. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we have to start with some B baggage, Joe. What? What? You know, this B baggage, a little off, a little off brand for us. I don't consider it necessarily baggage in the sense these people are not asking us for advice, but they are zooming into our DMs. So, <laughs> oh, frequently, oh, frequently. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, a little background Joe and I, uh, of course, are trying to get more listeners just like you. And we, we have a LinkedIn page and post our episodes there. Apparently, that has drawn a bunch of people that just want our business. And when I say business, I mean this podcast to <laughs> what? It is. It's a business now. Yeah, I had no idea, but apparently these people <laughs> we're fancy. These people know <laughs> they want us to let them promote our business, Joe. And there are a lot of them, and they really, really want our business, or they want us to use them to promote our business. Okay. Hmm. Well, uh, so are we going to break it to them that we don't really have the funds to pay them to <laughs> promote our business? Well, Joe, they're like hitting us with hard questions that I, I can't even, you know, Oh, I can't even answer. Okay. Tell me, tell me, what are these? Okay. First of all, uh, their name is Raz. <laughs> Raz hit us up. Razzle dazzle. Yeah. And he says, Hi, Joe and Morg. I see your podcast is starting to take off. Oh, my God. Is it? Wow. Thanks, Raz. Oh, Raz, <laughs> how do you know? Do you listen? <laughs> Shout out, Raz. But this is when the tides really changed, Joe. Mm. Raz from Audio Burst here. Audio Burst does not sponsor us, so that is not <laughs> a positive connotation. I mm -mm. hope this email finds you well. Oh, come on. Are you interested in learning a bit more? Well, first of all, uh, you told me nothing about it, so how could I be interested? And can we just comment on, I feel like we've all collectively established that I hope this email finds you well in 2020 is not the email <laughs> like starter you should be sending. I'm not well! <laughs> Send help! <laughs> so he goes on to send me a sales pitch. In one single effort, you can promote your unique audio content. That's us. That's right. Two Bs from Little D as well as increase the time spent on your website and apps. I didn't realize we had apps. He had no research. Into I us. know. I was <laughs> going to say, I'm not sure Raz really has knows anything about us. But also, part of me feels like some of those are just words. Like, I don't know how else to describe that. In one single effort, you can, what was it? Promote your unique audio content, as well as increase time spent on your website and apps. Okay, so I feel like he kept it vague enough that he's copying and pasting this. We are on to you, Raz. And what is this one single effort? Is that me pressing the OK <laughs> keys on my computer and hitting send to you? It's like one push up, like one single effort and you'll be done. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, it better be just like, sure. And then it's done <laughs> right? because it was one small effort. One single. Single effort. Right? I think he's lying. I do too. He must be lying. 
I do too. So what was this company called? I don't really want to keep saying it because they're, again, not sponsoring us, but... <laughs> Audio Burst. Come on, Audio Burst. I don't buy it. One single effort. Audio Burst wants our money. Audio Burst. Bad news for you. We ain't got none. Yeah. Bad news for you. <laughs> if the single effort is f- you doing free labor-, labor for us, then we're we're ready. We're here. Yes. We're always looking for an unpaid intern. Shout out to my <laughs> brother-in-law. The position is still yours if you're interested. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm going to reply to Raz right now. To be continued, y'all, we're going to get back to you on what Raz says. So I'm going to, oh my gosh, I'm going to offer him an unpaid internship. (laughs) Okay. I'm excited for this. Yes. So you better come back and hear if Raz, uh, if Raz accepted, maybe he'll be on the show. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. We could have Raz exchange an interview for free labor, but although it seems like Raz is giving us everything and we're giving Raz nothing. Airtime. So we are giving Raz something. Airtime. Airtime. Airtime, Raz. I oh my God, I'm gonna like remake his email back to him and be like, well have I got a deal for you, Raz. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark, once you draft this up, I want to hear what it says. And I'm really looking forward to Raz's response. Okay, I'll I'll probably post it on Instagram too. So y'all stay tuned. I'm excited. Okay, well, back to our topic for this week. History. Don't you mean history? Oh. Well, <laughs> surprisingly, Joe, I I feel like I had an equal balance of fe- male and female history teachers, is what I'm trying to say. I agree. So uh although yes, were they all coaches? Uh yes, <laughs> mainly, yeah. <laughs> okay. I know we've mentioned this once before, but a majority of, I think, all history teachers in the U.S. are coaches. You know, and though I would be curious about that because I feel like where we are from, Texas, is really big into football. It's, um, I would argue, seems to be a little more important than some academic things. Is there anything else? Maybe. I don't know. I shouldn't say that. But I don't know if in other states where they don't seem to value sports as much if do you think all teachers are coaches in other states like that oh my gosh good question i i don't know because i of course grew up in texas Mm -hmm. i still think a lot of different states even those that don't celebrate football as much as us have sports that require a lot of coaches on staff and then they always get the history jobs Okay, you're right. It just automatically goes to them. So, okay, histories are pretty much exclusively coaches. So, because of that, I feel like also my history lessons were very skewed towards videos, mainly videos. Oh, yeah. Oh, and that's something, too, is that I feel like the information I took away from history was, and not even like historical documentaries, it was like historical fiction. So, it kind of felt like loose it felt like a loose representation. It was more of like of the time. It felt like a stretch, though, to to watch in a history class. But, you know, we did it. We did it. Yeah. Like, if I were to do an interpretation of every coach that taught me history, it'd be like, oh, don't bother opening your books. Today, I'm going to tell you about carpetbaggers. And it was like, oh, OK. And it was just like some anecdotal story about what they had interpreted that time piece to be. They'd be probably be like, it is a person who carries a carpet bag. All right, next chapter. <laughs> you better get this right. I'm trying to get my AP scores up. Anybody watch the game last night? <laughs> okay, there is one coach in particular, though, that I always think of when I think of our teachers, especially our history teachers, because just like how blatantly he did not care. And I know you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I think so, because, Morgan, I think we've even mentioned him previously. He was our... You know, and again, this is another teacher who as a person I loved, but as a teacher, I don't know that he really did the best job, but he was shopping on eBay. Oh, for sure. But, and we didn't even have him in the same time. So he was he was all day shopping on eBay. Yeah, Morg, he had to put his bids in. Yeah, he was, oh, <laughs> he was always bidding. <laughs> he was always bidding. I'm pretty sure he got a TV in one, in one of my classes with him. And also, if you wasn't doing that, it was practicing his golf stroke. I don't know if it was like a power move or what, but out of nowhere, he would just like stick his diabetes needle in his leg <laughs> and look you in the eye. <laughs> he really would. He'd be like, one second. And then he'd be like, back to carpet baggers. I forgot about that. So actually, Mark, um, I actually, a few years ago when I was subbing or last year when I was subbing, I substituted for his class and I he had no idea. And I really just picked up the job just because I was curious to see, you know, how his class was. 
and the sub notes he left me were Sorry for the less than stellar sub notes or those the less than stellar lesson plans. Make sure everyone's done with their assignments or something like that. And it's always like so nice, Joe, to like know that people never change. <laughs> you know, right? And he had all these drawings on the board with like little <laughs> jokes. It was like sort of history, kind of like you said, a vague. Yeah, his own like interpretation. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So and it was just, you know, it was such a nice little memory and I look in the corner and there's a golf club and it was like oh, things never change he's still practicing those swings still practicing those swings well I wonder if it's been perfected you know he's had a long time well I think he's a golf coach so. <sighs> and does he does he coach his I mean does he uh I don't know what it is in golf does he hit his age or whatever the goal is under his age oh my gosh Clearly, we have we don't know anything about golf. I have no idea. Your handicap is that what you mean? No, I mean like your your total score at the end. You want it to be less than your age, which would be like a really good oh, score. Oh my god! But normally, you can only do it by the time you're older. Oh, okay. I thought like eighty was a good score. Exactly. So I, I mean, I don't know, Joe. He's getting up there. He could be getting a good score by now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he's hitting around there. I have no idea. I don't think he's 80, though. <laughs> well, I, I hope he's better than the average good score. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I don't know anything about golf. Now that we've established we, ner- we know nothing about that, back to history. For a future episode. <laughs> For, for our proper research to go into place. Morgan and I will spend an episode learning about golf. Oh my gosh, yes. But this coach, he, Joe and I were talking before this episode about how at the beginning of the year, everybody, what was it, Joe, we had to write on notebook cards? Yeah, we had note cards and we had to write things, you know, like those typical beginning of the year questions where it was like something I'm interested in or something I'm worried about. It was like little things like that. And then the last question was, something something I want to share with you or something you don't know about me and you're supposed to share a fun fact about yourself. Yeah. And and so then this coach would take those out throughout the year and read one aloud. I guess it was like random classes that he chose. Yeah, I guess so. I just remember, though, they were so funny, the ones that he would read. But then he later told us that he made them up. So it's like he wasn't even reading what was on the paper. Like one of them was... <laughs> How this girl, he picked up this girl's note card and he would always tell us who it was too, which was like looking back. Inappropriate. Yes. But again, they were fake. They weren't real, but still it's like. Yeah. But then everybody thinks that about you. That's even worse, maybe. (laughs) But it was so funny. I can't even be mad, Morg. (laughs) Like if he did it to me, I don't think I could be mad. They were so funny. Like he told us one time that this girl, her like something you don't know about me is that one time I sneezed in church. And I I blew a huge loogie into the lady's hair in front of me and nobody ever knew it was me or something like that. And I just remember, you know, like 12 years old. It was so funny. Yeah, he he like a really he missed his calling as a stand up comic in another life and instead was just like, hey, I'm going to capture your minds for an hour and I'm just going to practice some jokes like because he he was doing that part of his class, I feel like. That was his stage. But hey, if he had a stand-up comic gig, I would for sure go see him. Oh my gosh, I totally would too. I can't believe you substitute top for his class and it was <laughs> it was him. It was him still telling you that he wasn't he didn't do anything. Nothing had changed, just like you said. Sorry about that. Uh <laughs> good luck. It, and that's about and that's exactly how it went. And he He was a high school teacher and more the classes in high school. I think we've mentioned this before. They're like two and a half hours long or something. They're really long. So, I mean, to sit there with nothing to do, it was like I was super nervous about it. But these kids just like didn't do anything. And since I didn't have any plans or anything like, you know, that was that was it. Yeah, just both ignored each other. Just all existed in one room together. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Sounds like everybody right now with their families during COVID. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But I feel like high school students, I know like one or however long the high school classes are, they are really long. But I feel like at high school, we were we were pretty self-sufficient. Like I would just come in and do my other homework. I think I'd appreciate a little a little break. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it was really like that was one thing that I always thought was cool, I guess, about subbing for high schoolers was that it was kind of like that. It was like, hey, look, like do your work and like I'll leave you alone and you can leave me alone. 
<laughs> Both y'all like back away with your hands up. Hey, okay. hey, I'm cool. If you're I cool. want to get out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be good. If you'll be, good. we're all just trying to survive, all right. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say for for history though, I feel like in general history was always a class that didn't scare me as much as math or science because I felt like it was like way more creative. Like the way you could even apply history is more creative. You can like be like pretend you grew up in this time period or, you know, make uh make a statue in symbol symbolism of someone you respect and why you would build that for your community. So it's always like something where I felt like it was like tangible to how I think. Yeah, and like you said, I think it was for me at least I loved that aspect like you'd mentioned of the projects were always a little bit more creative. Like when I think about projects I've done throughout school, I mean, I think the majority of them are history projects because it is like you can be really creative in like the application of your understanding. Like I told you that one that I loved doing was in seventh grade, we got to design our own flag and we were given or we were taught all about like what the colors represent, like the symbolism and all of that stuff. And we all created our flags. And I remember thinking, what a cool activity, you know, whereas in math, it's like the most basic, like this is your formula. You have to follow it. This is always going to be true, which I mean, I guess is cool in itself. <laughs> Because like it kind of takes, you know, the guests were yeah. <laughs> the, the hard part of creating out of there. Yeah. But um no, I loved that. That was cool. And I mean, also like I love historical fiction. So I feel like we got to read some fun books and stuff like that. And you know, I didn't do a very good job of mentioning it, but like watching movies, <laughs> like even though it felt like a stretch, it was, you know, as a kid, that's fun to go in and watch a movie. Yeah, with all like fifteen of my classmates. I'm like, cool. This is what we're doing today. Great. Yeah. Yeah. And if your teacher can make it worse, work like loosely tied in like, oh, this movie takes place in 1892. <laughs> That's roughly the time period we're talking about this semester. So uh, we're going to watch this movie. Like, why not? Yeah, why not? And besides, he has to go back and bid on that camera his wife wants. So <laughs> it's not going to buy itself. It's not going to get really not and not at this price. No way. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I always appreciated history, too, because I feel like I feel like it also gives students an opportunity to start thinking about how they would react in social situations before they're faced with them. And I feel like, of course, there's always room to grow in this area. But I I do feel like it. it mm -hmm. one thing that stuck out to me from a history class, and I can't remember exactly what grade it was, but it was like, pick between if you would live in ancient Greece and be a Spartan or from Athens. And... I don't know. I just thought it was like a really cool report that we all had to write and say why and who we would be in that society. And it kind of just makes you start to think about like who you're going to be as a person. And I feel like that's very formative compared to math. <laughs> so maybe I'm biased, you know. So that actually, I don't know why, made me think of a project that we did, which again, I think you and I like took our projects to the next level. But in high school, we did a project and it was related to um, like discovery of the new worlds, I guess is what we call it. And we were, what would you say that? Not sailors, but your explorers. We were, ex yeah, we were explorers and we had to journal as if we were like day to day at sea. <laughs> oh my God. I remember. Right. And I remember thinking it was so fun because I mean, it was like, we're studying explorers and then we get to pretend to be explorers. I'm sure some kids that weren't as creative, creative as us hated this, but I just remember <laughs> you and I, we even dyed our papers. We soaked them in, in like coffee. coffee or tea. In coffee. Okay. And we burned the edges to make it look old. And I just remember I burned like half of my paper off. And ah. I went, I sent, sent myself to explore like wherever the island is of King, where King Kong takes place or whatever. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I made my mom do a photo shoot outside dressed as like <laughs> an expeditionist. And wait, your mom was the expeditionist? No, no, no. I, my mom made, took the pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did that. My brother starred in mine though. And I think my natives were hostile and I have a great picture of him where he he looks so angry, but my brother was, I don't know, he was really young at the time, so he was super cool about it. 
<laughs> he was really into it. Yeah, there we go. He was really he was just as into it as I was staging it. But he oh my, my played gosh. every part. He was the explorer and he was the hostile natives. <laughs> like, he was everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I totally remember that. And I remember soaking my paper in coffee. And also like I wrote it in pencil. And so then it was like faded so much because I soaked it. But I was like, I only have one copy. This is it. This is it. This is how a true expeditionist would have done it. Right. And I even remember like trying to use language that sounded really old timey. But I'm sure looking back, it made almost no sense. I don't know how I got a good grade on that project. I'm sure the teacher just saw that I soaked it in coffee and burnt the edges and was like, that's good enough. That's way more effort than I was expecting. (laughs) Yeah, so true. That is so funny. I had totally forgot about that even for this episode. It's so perfect. I know. And I don't know what you said that triggered it. But I mean, yeah, I guess just being so into those projects and really kind of getting that like to put yourself in the position I think that's what triggered it was you know I mean we got to really imagine ourselves as as explorers I know it was so fun too I just yeah writing those journals it's like day 23 on the ship my love yes (laughs) I don't know that is and I think that's exactly how I thought it's like day 39 we had to toss a man overboard he was quite ill but we're not sure with what (laughs) Probably dysentery. I also might have it. So if this is the last letter you receive from me, send my regards to my father. I've dropped a message in a bottle. (laughs) Oh my gosh, so good. Wow, I guess we should just do this again. Although I'm not sure how accurate Yeah, oh, no accuracy. Right? (laughs) Right? Like I think there was like zero research. It was like, oh my gosh, I... uh, like throw everything I learned out the window. I'm taking these things to King Kong Island. Like uh, I, zero research done. Like reads first sentence of the prompt. Hell yeah! Doesn't read the rest of the prompt. <laughs> <laughs> done. Okay. Sidebar though, maybe we should do an episode just using this uh, persona as if we are the explorers reading our diaries. Just a thought. <laughs> Okay, that that episode can come right after the episode where we learned about golf. <laughs> or the episode right after we talked to Raz. Shout out Raz. Raz, Raz is going to get back to me. I know he will. He wants your business. <laughs> Should I write him? Should I write him like I'm a journal expeditionist? <laughs> <laughs> Day three, Raz has not responded to my message. My warmest Raz. <laughs> While your business terms are unknown to me. I've been on this boat for over 10 days, and I miss you dearly. <laughs> that might confuse Raz, but sure. Yeah, Raz, Raz is confused about us, so he thinks we have an app and did not research us. <laughs> okay, but for our history projects too, Joe, we also did the Muddy Banks pop-up book that, oh my gosh, like, will go down in my, you know, pre-college career history as one of my favorite projects I ever did oh same I I mean just think about it pop-up book guys I mean Morgan and I were very committed to this I think all we had to do was like draw a picture or something real basic and Morgan and I took it to the next level and we're like but teacher teacher what if we made a whole book and it was a pop-up book what do you think what do you think (laughs) what what was the actual like the book was called muddy banks right yes the book was about was called muddy banks and it was about i believe he was a young he was around our age so he was like 12 13 something like that and he was i believe a runaway slave or an abolitionist was helping him escape slavery and the only reason i remember that more because our pop-up book worked is because one of our pages in the pop-up book it was a woman on a horse and if you lifted up her skirt Muddy Banks was under it. He was hiding. Yes. So it was, we worked really hard on that. Oh my gosh. I do remember. Okay. Yeah. And so the funny thing to me is that we read a book and then we like remade the book (laughs) as a pop-up. It was awesome. I wonder if the teacher kept it. I think she was really proud of us too. I'm not joking, guys. Morgan and I stayed like daily. It's not even like we worked on it outside of school. We like stayed after school in our history teacher's classroom to work on this. Also, speaking of that. Oh, we were so into it. So into it. it. That was another one of my favorite teachers, by the way. 
Yes. Yes, she was great. She was really great. She was someone who like gave us really cool projects and she was not a coach, surprisingly. Yeah, that is surprising. And she was she you could tell she really loved history. Yeah, she was really passionate about it and w- could make you like get excited about the class, which I feel like was always hard for me to be excited about. <laughs> exactly. And she really got us with muddy banks though. And I remember there was like also a section of the book that had biscuits or, or like something with biscuits and they like came out of the oven or something. I don't know. Anyways, guys, this book was cool. And I'm sure you guys are imagining like a professional one, but I mean, not that good. Imagine it with construction paper and probably some of the pop ups were a little faulty, but still very cool for two 12 year olds. Very cool for two 12 year olds. Like, well, especially when all we were restricted to was like use the classroom tools <laughs> to <Yes>. make this. <laughs> it was not supposed to be an at home project. We were just really, really, really excited about it. Right. It was probably by design to last like two class periods. And we were like, oh, no, no, we need more time. Our history teacher is like, ladies, I have to go home. That's such a good point. I wonder if in her mind she was like, I don't want to be here anymore. But she like had to have office hours. And if nobody showed up, she could leave or something like that. But we were there every day. <laughs> we're like, we're back. We're finishing our book. <laughs> we we were talking about how we're going to make the oven pop open. Okay. And I think we've got it. <laughs> oh, my God. That's such a kid thing to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. Joe, I have a fun game for us. Well, I don't know if it's a game. It's an activity, just like we like. Because it's school. <laughs> yeah. Of course. There are no games at school, only activities that teachers say are games. <laughs> Way to stay on theme. What? Okay. If you could pick one historical figure to teach one history class, what would you have them teach you about and who would they be? <sighs> Oh my gosh, a historical figure to teach me. So, oh, I gotta think about this more. I know it's a hard one. You only get you only get fifty minutes, so I only get know. fifty minutes. Well, they're gonna teach one class. One class. Gosh, this is a lot of pressure. I almost want to say someone like unexpected or someone who maybe wasn't like a reliable source or someone who was uh I don't know someone who was had a really big personality to keep it interesting like I feel like a lot of people would be really boring just based on what I've read about them in history books I don't know I don't know Mark I can't think of anyone can you think of anyone I gotta keep thinking on this I feel like okay depending on what grade I was in I might pick different people like to go teach a grade for one hour about one subject. Do I get to choose the subject or are they teaching history? Well, they're in your history class, but I would narrow it down. Oh, yeah. So like like if I'm a kid, I would say before fifth grade, Martin Luther King would come talk about the civil rights movement. Okay. To, you know, like I feel like there's like pivotal points in the in my life that I wish I could have heard more about a certain subject. And then there's pivotal points that they're going to be talking about to us for those 50 precious minutes. Right? Okay. Okay. So I feel like, you know, like if I'm thinking of it that way, I would be like fifth grade, Martin Luther King, like from his lips, tell us about the civil rights movement, what he was thinking, what, okay, you know, like, or if I'm older, maybe like really someone who could explain to me the economy and how it's set up and <laughs> what the heck's going on there. So I don't know. It's like different, oh, different that is points great. of my life, maybe different people. I don't know. Okay. So I can get on board with that. Okay. So then the, you did kind of make me think of one or something that like kind of stood out to me when I was in high school that I feel like it would be really cool to have gotten more of like a, I don't know, like you said, I guess hearing it directly for the person. But um, in junior year we learned about the meat packing industry like when it first started like back in when i don't even know what years this was but the like 20s. when a lot of immigrants is that the 20s when like there was a lot of immigrants who lived in like tiny little apartments and then like uh i don't know his, his name he wrote like the jungle or something like that and it was like an expose on like how unsanitary and stuff like that was i remember that being like something that we learned about that i was like oh my Upton gosh Sinclair. wow and it also feels Upton Sinclair. Yeah, I thought it was Sinclair. 
it feels weirdly relevant. And so what was his, because I don't know the background of this, what was the, the book that he was writing about? What did it relate to? You said the meatpacking industry, but what is it about? It was just what it was about was how, how I want to say like non-hygienic it was, like how there was no regulation. Like I think that's where all the regulations for that stemmed from. Like it was just the conditions were really gross. and Oh, of the meat. Yes. And like how they packaged it. Exactly. So, and again, I did zero research on this, so I could be totally this wrong to right mind. now. This just popped in my head. And and how they changed a nation to adopt regulations that now make our meat or, you know, like our food industry better. Yes. Yeah, I like that because I, I just feel like there's really interesting stories about like, well, first I had to get these people to believe it was even dangerous. And then I had to get these people to align with me behind changing the regulation. And yeah, because it's really history is also called social studies. And that's what it is a study of. And maybe that's what interests me more because it's just, yeah, how how do we socially change each other's minds or adjust our entire society? Well, I had no idea I was going to get so deep on this one. I just have been really inspired, I guess. I was going to say, I know. Don't you like how all I could respond with was, yeah. Yeah. I was like, dang, man, Morgan super like eloquent and deep on me. Like, whoa, guys. <laughs> I had no idea. I was not prepared for this. Like, I don't have any notes. I was just going to be like, man, history's cool. History's like stories, yo. So, um, unless you want to get any deeper, Morg. <laughs> well, okay. I did have one other because. I, I think it'd be really, really cool to hear from like one of the, the first female somethings. And oh, yeah, I think this has become more popular, popularized right now, even where maybe like more women are coming to speak to students at younger ages, more women in tech roles, more women that ha- like first female astronaut. And like, I feel like it's something that would be really cool for me as like a really young student to hear from. Yes. I don't think we get talked about our career very much until much later. And we're like having to decide we're going to college or Mm -hmm. not. But I I feel like doing that earlier and, and seeing somebody who has defined that for themselves and understanding what it might look like helps a lot outside of your family unit. And I would like that. No, I mean, and I agree with you. And I mean, even looking at historically, most of the figures you study, yes, there are a handful of women, but they're not as focused on as like men. Like, you know, it's like the men are like the the big roles and stuff like that. So I feel like, you know, seeing something like that where it's like they show you like a woman who's, I don't know, who's like a strong woman would be really beneficial for young women. Yeah. Like running a company or finding a new uh, cure to a disease, AO 2020. And (laughs) like coming in and talking about what that even looks like. How did that get to be where you're at in your life? Was it always what you wanted to be? And like understanding that a journey doesn't just happen in success, that they, they had a path that got them there. Anyways, I know. Deep. So wait, Wait, but I do want to comment on this because, Morg, I kind of want to say, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, is that what they wanted us to have with bugs? Because they partnered us with older women who were doing, who were going into oh like- Oh my God, did I just have this science presented parties? to me and I didn't understand it? That's the problem. Okay. <gasps> Morg. It only took us, what, like 20-ish years to figure this out? We've already had this experience. We've already had these women. Dang, you're so right. But they weren't, they weren't, um, they were doing an experiment on us. (laughs) Yeah. They didn't have the right motives. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was just, you know, it just felt like it somehow related. And those girls were like 19. You're right. Maybe maybe I didn't appreciate it. Maybe that was my moment. And here I am complaining that I want another one. Yeah. Yeah, Morg. Maybe at that age, you couldn't have really grasped it. You're probably right. Because you didn't. Yeah, you're probably right. I Yeah, I was unappreciative. I was mad I was there on a Friday. Wow. Whoa. Oh, my God. We, we sucked. Just, we just did like a meta social study right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Maybe that was the experiment too. There was more than one experiment. If y'all do not know what we're referring to, you'd need to go back and listen to episode 21 where we discuss bugs and our science lesson and how Joe and I were part of a science experiment. We've never been the same since. Really start us. <laughs> uh, Joe, I, I, I think we maybe mentioned this earlier, but in history, a lot of times our coaches would use videos to fill our 50 minutes for our classes. Cha. Best teacher ever. <laughs> yeah. A movie. Oh, okay. I'm going to pop this in and you <laughs> will know about this time period by the end of it. Uh, this is gone with the wind. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I know. That's like three hours of class. That's three class periods right there. That's right. Um, but no, Joe, I remember, um, one of the movies we had to watch was, I have no idea what it was actually about, but it was scarring because for like a, at least 10 minute segment of the movie, this man falls off a cliff singing. Do you remember this movie? Yes. Peachy. I don't remember. It was Sean Connery and Michael Caine. That's all I really remember. And that one of their <laughs> names was Peachy. And yes, like you said, the man falling off cliff. Yes. And it was so ingrained in my mind because of how weird that scene was and I was just like why am I watching this like as a kid I remember being like why am I watching this yeah I remember that kind of made me feel uncomfortable like I don't really know how to explain that because it wasn't like I, like a, an emotional discomfort almost because it was really I don't know it was just weird to watch this man like fall and I you know and they even said like he fell for 10 hours and it was like I just remember feeling like really weird about it and Morg what the heck were we learning about they were like in the Sahara Desert these two British men like what did we learn about that that was related to and I believe again it was fiction so it was just the time period but like what what was it about like British people in the Sahara I don't remember learning that. The man who would be king. Bam, there it is. Well, Joe, yeah, this really, really has impacted me because that 10 hour scene or not 10 hour fall. It wasn't a 10 hour scene. It was just but it was supposed to represent 10 hours of this man falling off a cliff and really cannot tell you even what I was supposed to be learning about. And they were singing 1885. Oh, it's not the Sahara Joe. It was in India. Oh, so not even a desert, was it? Well, where'd they find a cliff for him to fall off of? Wow, I am reading the synopsis. This is juicy. There's a plot to blackmail. Like, there's blackmail, Ooh. the word brotherhood. There's a lot of oh. things involved. All key historical words. <laughs> That's all our vocabulary words from the unit, I'm sure. Well, I'm sorry that we've ruined the end of this movie, but he does get pushed off a cliff. Oops, spoiler alert. alert. <laughs> Sorry, I think you're usually supposed to say that before. There's probably a lot of other historical nuances that you could actually watch the movie and learn, but we did not actually take that away with us. Well, we were 11. Yeah. I, I also <laughs> am like, should I have been watching this at 11? I don't think so. You know what else we watched at 11 that terrified oh, me? My God. You know, you already know. I know. I definitely know. You know. So it was called The Mission, and it was the opening. So it was about – this one I could see more about what we were learning because it was about uh, Europeans coming over and establishing these, I believe, Catholic missions and con trying yes. to convert natives or killing them, basically. And so the opening scene of this movie, The Mission, was all of these natives had put this man – I don't know if he was a priest or what, onto a cross and they carry him down to the river. So this is like a five minute scene. They carry him down to the river. Then they float him down the river and then we watch him fall off the cliff. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, uh oh, nope, not for me. And I think this doesn't really make me or my mom look very good. But I, I told my mom, I was like, mom, I cannot watch this movie. It's so scary. And my mom didn't make me go to the first period of school because um, it was y'all were going to finish the movie. Yes. And it was so scary. And the scene that we'd left it at, it was like gearing up for war between these missionaries, or I don't know if you call them missionaries oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. the natives. And it was like, it was really scary to me at 11. Yeah, They call themselves missionaries. 
Um, they did? Well, yeah, but they thought they were doing great deeds. So, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, Joe, I remember this exact scenario because you didn't have to finish the end of this horrible movie, terrifying movie, The Mission, for a sixth grader who got no briefing on the actual story beforehand. It wasn't like mm-hmm. he taught me about the missions and then he showed us the movie. It was just like, Hey, I'm going to let this movie speak for itself. Uh, here it <laughs> is. <laughs> this is what happened. And uh, I remember trying to find you before I went to that class because you had it first period. And so I come and find you and you had missed it. And I was like, how did it end? Like, what am I about to have to go watch today? And you were just like, Oh, I didn't go. <laughs> Morg, I couldn't. It was so scary. It was scarier than anything I'd ever seen. And I mean, to be f- like fair for context, like I think I'd seen Spider-Man like a few weeks before and that scared me so much that I kept leaving the, the- theater. Like I I really did not. She was jumpy. She I was, was jumpy. jumpy. I didn't like that. And that was like s- the mission was way gorier. Like the scariest thing in Spider-Man was like the green goblin throwing a thing or something that blew up and nobody got hurt. The mission, <laughs> lots of people got hurt and lots of people died. Yeah, it was scary. And that was way more like at least the movie was way more educational than uh, that that one of the man falling off the cliff for ten hours because you're right it re- it was like pretty accurate of the missions yeah it was I mean it was which I guess was useful because it was you know based on the book you don't I never thought of that but now I've been scarred and now I will forever think of those missions as being terrifying and horrible and really gory <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was very terrifying. I remember after the first day of you watching it, you were like shaking coming out of your our our sixth grade class. You're like, I don't know, Morg. It was bad. Morg, apparently I have a real issue with people falling off of cliffs because again, it left me feeling very uneasy and like uncomfortable. And I think what was so scary about the mission was even though again I get this is like history, I didn't know what was gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. No briefing. Nobody like no like briefing. what should I have like taken a form home to sign that I was going to see? That was for sure PG-13. Yeah, it had to have been. Also more not related to the mission but related to that teacher who showed us the mission. Just because thinking about history and something that I don't really see the relationship to history but we did in our history class was do you remember we learned how to play chess? Yes, he was obsessed with it and I joined like a chess club. Oh my gosh, how have we never discussed this? You were in a chess club? In that in that coach's class, yeah. Oh my gosh, I just remember that my dad played ch- chess and so he'd like tell me about it. And my dad, I forget what it was called, but my dad like taught me like this this move or something like this or this this strategy, I guess, and it had a name. And so like I knew what it was, but I didn't know how to ch- play chess. And so the chess te- or the chess teacher, the history teacher, when he was separating us into groups of like beginner and like kids who knew chess, the way he did it was he asked who knew what this move was. And like, I didn't know that's what it, the purpose was for. So I like raised my hand and I got put in like the advanced chess group of oh. history and was immediately like, oh, no, this is wrong. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I got to go. I got to go. I, I just no 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 like in theory i know what that is but in practice no clue i um regret my decision why the heck were we doing chess and history joe that is the thing about history loose ties to anything (laughs) just to anything just like anything is history the kings of ancient rome played chess you see this piece this was Designed to represent the head general of the... Whatever empire. Yeah. Whatever empire. Incan. Incan. Wow. Incan. 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 Why not? Um, Joe, okay. Let's wrap on something a little fun where what would be the one thing that you think uh, would make it into your 2020 history lesson for future students? <laughs> lesson morg um hmm, for 2020 i only get one lesson i don't get like an entire semester well it's it's your day to teach the one class on 2020 what do you teach them about 
That is crazy and places a whole lot of restrictions on the craziness that is 2020. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have okay. a book for it. Like, you know, whenever future a whole students book. have one. <laughs> Go home, read this whole book on 2020, everyone. <laughs> um, well, that is tough. I think definitely some highlights for it would be maybe for like younger kids, I'd want to maybe introduce them to what do you call that? Uh, or maybe like middle school kids, like supply and demand with the whole like toilet paper thing. Oh my gosh. So you would, yeah, yeah. You, that balance of economy. There we go. Balance of economy and be like, here's a real life example for you. Back in 2020, everyone started freaking out and buying all of the toilet paper. And then there was no toilet paper and people were very worried. Gosh. Yeah. So you got a little economics in there and, uh, yeah, with your history lesson. Yeah, we're going to have a really, really well-rounded history class. And then what else would we talk about? I don't know. What would you add to your history lesson? I got to think about mine. I feel like I'm cheating here because I don't know what it'll be. But I feel like I would want to talk about how this year changed the course of history. So I'd, I don't know what it is yet, of course, because... I, d- I, I haven't seen into the future, uh, but I feel like it'd be really cool to pick out elements of whatever's happening go- going on right now and say, yeah, because we've worked from home this entire year, this technology became adopted almost, you know, in full. And because of that, this happened and this happened and this happened. And so, like, I don't know. I think that would be probably something I would I would do with my 2020 lesson. Oh, Ah, I like that looking to the future. Okay. And seeing the impact. Okay. I'm with you. I definitely think that would be a good, you know, it's definitely feels like a turning point in history. Yeah. And I feel like it would be like kind of a cool look back of like, you know why you do that today? Well, 2020 kids. That's right. You, you kids want to know why uh, you guys are on a little TV screen (laughs) and not in person with me? 2020. Yeah, that's right. Take it all the way back. That's right. (laughs) We virtual, (laughs) y'all. Well, Joe, on that note, we're out of time. Already? Already. We got all through history. I know. I know y'all who listened and found us on accident are really, really wondering where the lesson is in here. Right. Any any historical accuracies? (laughs) There's none here. Sorry about that. We might have prefaced that, but... (laughs) This is where we do our terms and condition under no circumstances should you use anything in this recording to reference anything about history oh yeah definitely (laughs) don't use this to help you with any projects or anything like that (laughs) thank you so much for joining us this week we will be back again next week we drop episodes every friday and we are all done with back to school y'all we've gone through the main subjects we killed it at science We rocked it out with math. We talked about reading, writing, cursive, pause, typing. That one just is all encompassing. And now we have wrapped here with history slash social studies. So we are done with our little mini series on back to school. And I'll leave our theme for next week to be a surprise. Can't wait for you to rejoin us and follow us on Instagram at 2 Bs from Lil D. We love having you here with us every week. So come join us again next week and have a good one. 